you're watching Telecom TV. I'm joined now by Arpit Joshi Pura of the Linux Foundation. Arpit, thanks for talking to us on Telecom TV. Thank you. Excited to be here. Um, and some exciting news as, as well. Um, I want to talk about the, the first code release from ONAP. But first of all, let's put things in, in perspective. What is ONAP and how does it fit and what's the relationship with the Linux Foundation? Absolutely. Uh, ONAP stands for Open Network Automation Platform. And it is one of the first and the most ambitious projects to bring closed-loop network automation all the way from data plane through services. And it essentially uh, was launched six months ago at ONS, uh, Open Networking Summit in Santa Clara, uh, which essentially combined two open source projects. One was eComp, which was AT&T driven, and the other one was OpenO, uh, which was driven by China uh, uh, service providers. And we brought the communities together to harmonize them into one global platform that serves as a basis for network automation. So what is the significance of, of the first code release? The Amsterdam code release, as it's called, uh, now released in, 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 in public uh, as, as part of open source, is extremely important because it did two things uh, right. The first is it brought a set of diverse technology components together to create this end-to-end -end platform. And that was built by over 500 developers, code contributors, over 1,500 you know, uh, global co committers and contributors. I mean, huge, huge community. But the more important thing was, as part of the ecosystem, we are so excited that you know we have that we have crossed the tipping point on ONAP, where we have over 55 percent global service provider subscribers participating. Meaning, the global subscribers are represented, you know, over 55 percent from a, from all over the world, right? Uh, and and uh, we have all the networking vendors very active, top 10, all top 10 of them very active in this community. All system integrators are active. So this is a first attempt to bring the community together and develop a common platform for use. And why is it significant for telecoms operators? Uh, the most significant part of Amsterdam uh, and ONAP in general is that it eliminates the manual processes. So faster time to deploy services, faster time to revenue, simpler OPEX, simpler CAPEX, all based on SDN, NFE, and virtualization disruptions that happened you know, in the last five years. And we have just pulled, as ONAP, the entire open source community together to deliver this uh, that, that will just accelerate the adoption before 5G and IoT hit. You know, remember, automation is mandatory before 5G. Right? You can't have an IoT device on the phone waiting for a service. It's not going to happen. Are we some way from this this happening? Um, you know, because there, there is this urge and urgency to to push 5G and get it into commercial operation earlier than the time frames. We're, we're, we're steaming ahead on this. We are saying that there are some fundamental building blocks still need to be addressed. That's right. That's right. So you know, 5G is not just the radio and faster, bigger, better, right? It's the rest of the software the rest of the infrastructure, beyond just the radio, that needs to be automated. That's what these projects are focusing on, and that's what Amsterdam is. We hear a lot at the moment also about Mano. Um, is, is, is ONAP um, related, or does it encompass Mano? Oh, Mano is a subset of ONAP. ONAP includes everything from the data plane control, Mano, as well as analytics and Vim layers, right? So it's, it's a platform, as I said. Uh, Mano is a subset. And you know, based on the Etsy standards, ONAP follows that from a from a architecture perspective, and and it it encompasses Mano and includes it as part of the overall architecture, right? And that's what the Amsterdam release is focused on. It's 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 one of the first and the most important platforms that that is out there. And you say we've reached this tipping point. So have we really become a, um, ONAP's become a, a de facto framework for, for telcos now? Uh, yeah. So. When you see that over 55% of the global subscribers are represented by participating companies, uh, we know that 
each of these are going to take ONAP and then implement it in their networks to support these new services. So once you cross the tr critical threshold of you know even 40%, 50%, you are now in the zone of tipping points, right? Uh, by any theory. By, by <laughs> so, so effectively, we have gotten to a point where uh, not only are major service providers are aligning to this, but also all the vendors are aligning to this. And with a community of over 1,400 uh, people, um, and, and 57 plus member companies. This is where innovation is done. Okay, and this, you know, we're excited to host it as part of Linux Foundation. Now, Amsterdam is a very significant release, but the whole process evolves and is, is, is continuous. Where are we going? Where, where are we heading? Uh, yeah, so the process and the governance of uh, code development is what is proven uh, through the Linux Foundation projects over years. So we are using those processes. Um, we have gone in and we are using CI CD type models, so extremely agile development processes, con continuous integration, continuous testing. Um, Amsterdam is the first release of the platform, and what we'll expect to see is portions of these platform and the modularity of these platforms will be used in different POCs, whether it's you know AT&T or Vodafone, Bell Canada. Uh, uh, China Mobile, you know, you name it, right? Lots of the global large carriers who have been aggressively participating to make this happen, they will go through and, and, and do the, the POCs, they'll go through and do the deployments, they will get ready for 5G, right? And, and they will do it in 4G context, so it's not like you have to, you cannot do it in 4G. So that's kind of the process. Uh, the next release is the Beijing release, where we're going to continue supporting new use cases, expanding the platform, uh, you know, focusing a lot more on standards harmonization beyond MEF. MEF we've already announced, but there's a lot more coming so that we can provide a global community and one view for the end users. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.